Listen, guys. Hey, Gina, how are you? Listen, just leave my ex-wife out of this, OK? She had nothing to do with it. I will answer a couple of questions if you just leave her alone, please. Brad, why'd you beat up that bartender? I didn't beat anybody up. We had a misunderstanding. Were you drinking? I was at a bar, Eric. Yeah, I had a drink or two and some peanuts. L listen, I got to get to work, but uh, if, if, just please stay off the property and, and, and leave Susan alone. That would be great. Oh, my God! Susan? Brad, Terry, and the victim. Oh, yeah, right, for uh, three years. But they were still friendly, you know, show people. He's been uh, hiding out here for the last couple of days. Hiding from paparazzi. Just like the bartender on Friday night. It was big news. Why is this thing still running? She was working out. Yeah, she's working out here. Killer opens the back door, sneaks up behind her, stabs her three times. Neck, back, and chest. Murder weapon's nothing special either. It's just a camping knife. Hey, look at this. Do you think he could have had a motive? Who? Brad Terry? No, nah, I don't think so. No kids, no alimony. Besides, he can't be the guy. He was out front when it went down. Ten witnesses with cameras. Killer? Broke the glass, opened the door, reached in, went out the same way. There's, there's glass in the track directly under the door. Yeah, so? I think the door was open when the glass was broken. Or the killer kicked the glass around when he ran out. This driveway curves around the back of the house. Are you Dustin Shears? Yeah. We're working with the police on the Brad Terry case. What do I owe you? Don't worry about it. I understand Mr. Terry was in here last week. There was a fight. My brush with fame. Well, actually, it's more than a brush, really. You're not going to sue him, are you? I considered it. But I figure after what happened with his ex-wife, that guy suffered enough. I'll have another scotch. Yeah. Besides, I felt pretty bad about it. Before the cop showed up, he wrote me a check for two oh. grand. He wrote him a check. That's the check? That's it. I don't know whether to cash it or frame it. What's wrong? The handwriting. Looks OK to me. It, it's not just OK, it's perfect. He stayed right on the line. I don't think he was drunk when he wrote this. Well, this is your 100th episode, uh, is that right? Uh, congratulations. I understand that's a big day for you. Thank you. Yeah, big one. I've been working a long time for it. My whole life, actually. And how does that work? I, I know that you weren't paying Susan alimony, but uh, when the show started, you were still married, right? Yes, it was. Under California law, she would have been entitled to half of any syndication money. You think you found a motive, don't you, Mr. Monk? Would you like me to take a lie detector test? Would that make you happy? Yes, it would. Anytime. Anywhere. I was at a bar, Eric. Yeah, I had a drink or two. It's peanuts. Listen. The local news has been running this property, all day please. long. Susan? Now, I had the lab run a voice print analysis. That was definitely Susan. We think the killer was a deranged fan. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Have you talked to the one we met, Marcy Maven? No, not yet. We're still trying to track her down. I asked around. You realize that this show goes into syndication. Brad Terry stands to make over $20 million. There's your motive right there. He did not want to share it with his ex-wife. Gentlemen, Max Green, the truth machine. What do you got? Well, according to this, he's clean. He's Mr. Clean. Zero deception. You see?
Marcy Maven, this is Adrian Monk. He's working on the case with us. Yeah, I remember you. Now, Marcy, I want you to tell him exactly what you've been telling us. I did it. I killed Brad's ex, Susan Malloy. You guys, have you read Larry's script? No, is it any good? It is the worst script I have ever read. I figured. I'm what? Brad. He lied to that girl about her script. I was there. So what? He was being polite. No. No, 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 no. He was wearing one of those pulse monitors. His heartbeat didn't change, not a fraction. He's a sociopath. That's how he beat the polygraph test. He did it. He's the guy. He can't be the guy. He's the guy. He's the guy. Brad Terry, you're under arrest for the murder of your ex-wife. You can't be serious. I was out on the front lawn the whole time. Everybody saw me. You made sure everybody saw you by pretending to be drunk and staging that fight a few days earlier. After an incident like that, you knew the press would follow you anywhere. That was the whole idea. You needed witnesses. I was at a bar, Eric. Yeah, I had a drink or two, and some peanuts. Listen, stay off the property, please. Like, leave Susan out of it. OK, and, and freeze I it right clear. there. That proves it. I was outside when she screamed. Oh, yeah, she screamed, but that scream was 15 years old. You recognize this? This is the first movie your wife ever made. It took us forever to track it down. The movie's been out of print for years. Marcy Maven recognized the scream because she's seen the movie a hundred times. The special agent Rusty Clark would say, here's what happened. Last week, you came in here alone after hours. What are you doing? It was easy to transfer Susan's scream from the slasher film onto the exercise video. The morning of the murder, you smashed some glass on the rear door to make it look like somebody broke in. You hit a knife near the front door where you could grab it quickly. Then you replaced her exercise video with the one you doctored and the stage was set. As you planned, the press was out front and you made sure they saw Susan alive as you left the house. You recorded the audio low intentionally because you needed her to turn the volume all the way up. Right foot. Listen, guys. The right. Arms down. Just believe her. What are you doing? Susan? The press thought you were going in to help her, but you were going in to kill her. You only had a few seconds. It was all you needed.